What up, though? It's your boy Isaac Moore speaking right here, aka the Fashion Assassin. I just jumped out the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. Go your pouch. Yeah. Rats in a quarter ounce. Yeah. Two accounts. Yeah. All right, so we got Isaac Moore jumping off the porch with us today. Yeah. How you feeling today, man? I'm feeling good, man. I'm excited just to be here, man. Hmm. Nah, yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been looking at you guys for a, a while. I'm just very privileged just to be here. Okay. Yeah. Nah, I appreciate that, and I also appreciate you coming by today too, man. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. So, are, are you from Houston originally, or where are you from? Born and raised. Born okay. and raised from Houston, Third Ward, Texas. Ooh. Yeah. Right here. It goes down in Third. It's going down. Yeah, for <laughs> real, for real. So, like, looking back towards your childhood, were you always like the creative type, or what? What, what type of hobbies were you into as a kid? <clears throat> uh, you know, I'm six four years. I'm six four, and uh, so, you know, it seemed like you when you're a certain type of age or height, you know, uh, they always want to categorize you, put you like you should go hoop or you should play basketball and things like that. So, no, I, I um I never, I you know, I always been like into basketball, you know, um, but I but I realize I always been very creative though. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So when would you say you jumped off the porch in Houston? Uh, 19. Okay. 19 years old. I was in high school and uh, it was at a time like uh, when I was going through uh, um, uh, prom hmm. and I didn't want to wear what everybody else was wearing. And um, so everybody else was wearing like men's warehouse suits and Al's former wear or something like that. Um, so I decided to make my own. Um, my own suit. So at that time, I loved jerseys. Um, my favorite players at that time was Camelo Anthony. So I took like five jerseys from there and I made like a whole tuxedo. Oh, wow. Like tuxedo, like the blazer, the jacket with the pants. And I made my, uh, my date too, so. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. How long did that take for you to make? Uh, like two days. Oh, that's not too like bad. Like two or three then. days, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So were you always like big in the fashion or always like trying to stand out? With, with well, I always, I always, I always been the person that stand out. Always. You see what I'm saying? I love glitter. I love loud things and stuff like that. So I always been a person that stand out. Yeah. Yeah. Was there any like uh, brands or designers that really had influenced you back then? Like, man, they are really dope. This is something I want to do for myself. Too. Not back then. Once I started getting very involved, and what I'm doing, um, not just designers, brands mm -hmm. really inspire me. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Like I'm more so like, I'm a great designer, but I look at it like brands in the world, you know? So, so yeah. what were some of those brands that inspire like, you? Like Whether definitely like, you can't, you know, like a Dolce Cabana, okay. you know, Louis Vuitton, you see what I'm saying? Those, those brands are, um, that I look at, you know, like, Louis Vuitton, like, is one of the biggest, well, not one of the biggest brand in the world. You see what I'm saying? And um, so I just like how they do it, how they market, how they present it to the people, and how it feel like they not, the customer's not supporting those brands. It feel like they, they deserve it. You see what I'm saying? And that's why I want to create something like that. Okay. Yeah. So going back to the prom, like what type of reactions did you get when you showed oh, up? Oh man, I was, I was on the news for it. Really? Like I got so much attention for it, man. And that's what I realized I had like a gift, hmm. you know, um, for what I'm doing right now. Yeah. So what did you do after high school? Did you go to school? Did you go to college? I went or? to, um, I went to Texas Southern University. Um, yeah. Um, you know, stay with a couple of friends. I never, uh, I went to school for marketing and uh, and just trying to figure it out from there, but I didn't finish college, but I did go to college though. Okay. Yeah. Were you, were you able to learn something as far course, as the marketing side? Of course, of course, of course. That's why I'm so good at what I'm doing right now because <laughs> like not, not more so of the designing part. I figured out a way how to get it out there. Yeah. You know, so that had to do a lot, a lot to do with what I got going on right now. Okay. Yeah. So at what point did you realize, all right, I want to start my brand. Yeah. It's time for me to go all in with this. I think for me, it, it, it started in 2012. When I realized that, man, um, I was at a, I was looking at awards, award shows, um, what fashion award shows. 
and um, I started seeing like a lot of great designers was getting awarded for their for their work, and uh, and I haven't saw no black American really dominate in the industry of this profession of fashion. And um, so that's when I start taking it serious because it's a lot of great designers, but it's not a lot of big brands that a, um, that a black American is really behind that's really influenced the whole culture yeah. like that. So I decided to take my talent, take my gift and, and just go from there. Okay. Yeah. So what, what were like some of your first pieces that you came out with? So. Of course, like, I was like one of the first person that ever started doing t-shirts. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? I started this stuff when I was 20, 2004, 2003. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Um, so my first, I started designing like, uh, like dresses, t-shirts, um, this stuff like that, like suits, you know, cause I was really into suits then and stuff like that, so. Yeah. Yeah. So did you always have like, you know, the vision like, this is gonna be high end luxury no I didn't have no idea it was gonna be high-end um, it just my approach my vision and my direction it made it high-end especially my presentation you see what I'm saying so it just really people start seeing it as it's high-end yeah. I never thought it can be a high-end brand you know and stuff like that so what were some of the challenges you faced at first when you started Isaac and Moore I mean, everything, man, like, um, just homeless. You know, all my life, you know, um, I never had a car. I'm, I'm 37 years old, I never had a car till up to 33. Never had a home up to 33, too. And uh, so I've been walking all my life with a, with a backpack full of my designs, you know, trying to get people to believe in me, showing people my ideas and things like that with sketches and, you know, so, just to get people to, to buy into it. That was my biggest uh, adversity and my biggest challenge right there. Yeah. You know, because I actually used my own name to get people to buy it. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? How difficult is that? So, and um, I just changed the narrative and I really made it happen, yeah. you know? Did you ever feel like giving up while, you know, while being homeless, while facing some of these difficult challenges? Um, I never thought about giving up. Um, this is all I had, you see what I'm saying? I ain't have nothing else to, to fall back on. This was like, this gave me peace. When I was sleeping in the parks and 24 hour restaurants, man, like, just to think about what I'm doing, you see what I'm saying, and what I could do. That used to warm me up when it was cold outside. You see what I'm saying? Like, when I was walking 10, 15 miles or 20 miles, man, like, I'm not knowing that I walked that that far, see what I'm saying? Because I was so much in my head. So I never thought about giving up because this really actually gave me my peace. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So. Now, did your family and friends, did they support you right away? Or were they more like, man, go get a job? <laughs> oh, definitely that. <laughs> definitely that. They didn't support me right away. But, some, but I mean, you know, they gave me a place to stay. You know, they gave me food. And I think that was the biggest support right there. But far as with my dream, they wasn't so much adamant about that. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So. So what would you consider like your big break? You know, when it went from, all right, this is a vision to, no, this is my reality. Now. So 2017, um, I did, I, I made my first backpack, my first product. And, uh, and I used to go around, you know, to, to get people to say something cool about my first product. And it was a backpack. And I take my iPhone and say, hey, look, check this out, man. What you think about it? You know, and I used to video it. And uh, one day, Meek Mills uh, for All Star, uh, what, well, for James Harden Weekend in Houston okay. in 2017, he seen it. And um, he gave me a shout out. And um, it went stupid crazy from there. Oh, wow. Yeah, so literally, I had one bag. <laughs> I had one bag. And I was just, need, I needed that bag for my own marketing. You see what I'm saying? But Meek Mills, he said, look, I need, you gotta give me this bag for me to do it. So I gave it to him and it went crazy for me. Yeah. Yeah, so that's how I got started, yeah. Now, was it overwhelming at the time or were you getting flooded with messages and orders at this time? Or? Of course, like I had to, man, look, 
so many, I made like $120,000 in one day. Wow. I had to refund so much money back because I only had one bag. So I ain't know about, I ain't know about no production. I ain't know about no shipping and things like that. So I had to learn um, on the go. I had to learn as it was happening for me. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So I think it was a good thing, but it was a bad thing too because I'm dealing with so many people. You know, and you're, not, and you're not knowing what you're doing. You see what I'm saying? You're not even knowing what you're doing. You're learning how to do it as you're making money. So I'm refunding a lot of people. I'm going through so many people saying this and saying that. Some people, some people is patient with me and understanding with me. You see what I'm saying? So I learned how to do it. So I'm still figuring out how to do it because it's going so fast. Like I told you, it's like 2017. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So. What was like the turnaround time on the production at that time? Man, at that time, like a year. <laughs> a year, really? <laughs> yeah, because I didn't know how, I didn't know what to do, bro. I didn't just know where to even get started at from that. You know, like I said, I took a sample, and my sample did what it needed to do. Wow. You know? Yeah. So, and that was my seed money to, uh, to get started. Yeah. So where did you go from the bags? What else did you start in? I just started focusing on my bags. I started, okay. I, I, you know, my thing is this. I think when you, for 10, 12 years, and you're thinking about one thing over and over again, it feel like you're in prison because you can't even get your ideas out. I didn't have the resources. I didn't have the money. I had none of that. So I feel like I was in jail, man, like for real, for real. So when I finally got the resources and the, and the money, I started going crazy with the idea. So I couldn't stop designing. You see what I'm saying? So I never look at it like it was a business. I was, I was looking at it like it was an opportunity for me to create. Now I created a name for myself. Now I'm just like, okay, well, this is a business now. So now I got to treat it as one. So right now I'm just finding one product that I want to focus on so many different colors with it you know so allow people to appreciate different colors and different sizes of it and things like that so that's why i'm at yeah no that's yeah. smart yeah so i had to learn that though i didn't know that i was going crazy <laughs> with the ideas and the design so understood mm -hmm. so what do you want you know isaac and moore what do you want this brand the message to be so <clears throat> it's it's a few things uh isaac and moore uh, People just don't want to be successful. They want to be successful for something. And normally what that looks like is for someone else's ideas. And people is working hard for that. You know, I just want to create a brand that people want to work hard for so people can rest in their success. So I'm saying they feel like, you know, when you buy a Gucci, you feel like Gucci validate your success. You see what I'm saying? When you buy a Lamborghini truck, you feel like the Lamborghini truck validates your success. And that's what the Isaac Moore brand is about. I want this brand to validate people's success in life. Yeah. They work hard in life, you know, because people work hard and, you know, and I just want to be able to provide that and say, and say, you know what, this is what I work hard for. Gotcha. Yeah. At what point did you realize, all right, I need some help. I need to hire some people to help me out with this. Man, like, I always, but I always had like trust issues too. You see what I'm saying? Like, like just not believing in people, always believing in myself the most. And um, so as I was growing, and I know that people didn't want to help me at first, and now I'm trying to, now a lot of people start want to come around me and things like that. So my, in my back of my head, it's like, it's just different, you know? So it's just been me because with my own, uh, personal way of thinking when it comes down to different people, I don't trust them, you know? So I always could get the help, but now I realize, man, like this is a company, I need to put things in perspective, put things in order. And um, so forget how I think, that's, I gotta set that up. Absolutely. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So, yeah. yeah. Um, where's your inspiration come from when you're gonna sit down and create something? The struggle. like. I mean, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a real creative, man. Like, I could just look at, if I look at things for so long, that thing that I look at is going to inspire me to create something. I can see a purse out of anything. I can see a bag out of anything. I can see what I want to see out of anything. You know? So that's where my inspiration comes from. Everything. If I look at it, your posture, your, you know, your, your structure, 
You see what I'm saying? Like this wall, those bricks, those lines, and I can get really inspired by anything. How much time do you, you know, spend searching for like the right fabric, the right material for, for your brand? <clears throat> so when I design, I design like 30 different styles. Like I take like three months and go in and, and design like 30 different styles, colors. I can even see the model. I see the marketing. Cause I don't, I see the packaging. I see all that in my, when I create a product. See what I'm saying? So it'll, it'll take me like three months to design a whole like 30 different pieces. So, so when I start breaking out pieces, people are like, golly, you working. I already did, I already did that already. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So I could, so it could last like three or four years, but I already designed it in three months because I designed so many. Yeah. So yeah. What's your thoughts on the fashion industry right now? I love it. I love people just coming out, people very confident, uh, people really showing, casing their ideas. And, uh, um, and I just love the boldness of it. You see what I'm saying? Like, uh, yeah, I just love it. Yeah. And I respect any and everybody that creates something. I respect a person like you. This is the creativity right here. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. Nah, absolutely, man. So where, where can people get, you know, your brand at right now? Is it only online? Is it available in stores? No, so right now I'm, I'm actually like, uh, um, <clears throat> about a few months ago, I gave back to my old school, to my high school. I gave over $40,000 worth of, worth of uh, my products and stuff like that, you know, and, um, and the reaction and the response I got from it, I realized that I want to actually do my first flagship store in Third Ward in Houston. See what I'm saying? So that's what I'm working on right now. But right now, the only way you can get it is through um, online. Okay. And yeah. what's your website? It's IsaacAndMoore.com. Okay. Yeah, on everything though. Yeah. <laughs> so what would you say has been one of the biggest sacrifices you had to make in your life for you to be successful at this point? I mean, just, I think the sacrifice is, man, like, I think when you have a dream, when you have a vision, I think that's the biggest sacrifice, period. Because you have a life before you, you embrace your vision or your ideas. You see what I'm saying? And I think by me just selling all the way out to my vision and only to make that my reality, I think that was the biggest sacrifice I ever made. No, I feel that. You see what I'm saying? And what about the biggest risk you would say you took for your career? This, I'm telling like, just going all the way in, man. Like, I love what I do. I can't see myself doing nothing else, man. Like, I'm, I, I'm really obsessed with it. Like, for real, for real. I believe that this do something for me, then, then I do something for it. I feel like I need this. This give me life. I feel that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't want to do nothing else. I don't want to be in a real estate. I don't want to do no Bitcoin. I don't want to do none of that shit. I don't want to do none of that. I just want to create, 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 and create. Because like all these people that, that, that got the real estate and, and, the, and do all this other kind of, I mean, these other people thinking about this stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and they creating the value on that and people buying into it. So I'm, I think I'm just as much as credit to all them people. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, instead of just putting my, my energy and my money into that, I put it all my in, my energy and my emphasis in this. Creating the big the, the next big thing. Yeah. You know? I got you. What is your definition of success? Um, success to me is um, just really finding an area that you're dominating in. You know, I, like like for instance, like when you think of basketball you associate basketball with a name. That lets you know that person dominate the area of basketball. You see what I'm saying? So I think success for me is when you think of an area, a, a era or an area in life and you associate my name with it, that's what I'm successful in. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. Do I need to re-ask that last one? Okay, cool. That was mine? Okay, cool. All right. 
All right, so what's some of your short-term and then also your long-term goals for the brand? Like, what, what's your ultimate vision? Uh, my ultimate is, like I told you in the beginning, like, I just want to create a brand that people want to be successful for. That's my ultimate. Like, all over the world, all over the world, people just really working so hard and they validate their success with that Isaac Moore item. Yeah. It's something that I created. Now, that's, that's my ultimate right there. Yeah. Now, do you want your brand available in like other stores and department stores? Or um, would you rather just you be the plug for it? Um, right now, because I realize atmosphere is more important than product. You know, if you take a Rolls Royce and you put a Rolls Royce in a Toyota dealership, it automatically don't have the same value. Why? Because it's in the wrong atmosphere. But if you take that same Rolls Royce as in the Toyota dealership back to the Rolls Royce, it gets its value back. So I never want to give another, give my product to another atmosphere if I haven't created the atmosphere for my product first. Understood. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I know how I want my product to perceive, and that's where it go gets its value from. No, I feel that, man. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So what is available right now? If you were going to go on a website, what, what's available on iTunes? So right now, I'm just revamping right now because, like I was telling you, man, like I realized this is a company now. So I need to find our, uh, a bag that I want to create that represent my company. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? So um, that's what I'm working on right now. So, uh, so nothing is available right now. I just want to create more awareness about it. You know, and um, and let and, and that's the easiest thing, create. You see what I'm saying? But the hardest thing that ever been for me is is the company part. You see what I'm saying? Like, I come from homeless. Like, like I come from really like living on the streets to to not just making money, but people really buying into it. So I'm just really learning this, learning this more than me creating something. So. Yeah. I got you, man. What's some advice you would share to some, you know, upcoming designers who want to get their foot into the game? I think, man, you gotta you gotta find something that you wanna put your life into. You know? Like I think people just put their foot in, in it. Or they put their money into it and they think that's good enough or they put their hand in it and they, they think that's good enough. You gotta put your life into it. Yeah. You know? And, um, and I think that's the only way you're going to win when you put your life in something. Because whatever, you, whatever you're doing, that's a life in itself. You know, I believe like a baby teaches you how to become a father. You know? Mm -hmm. And I believe a business first teaches you how to become a businessman or a businesswoman. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So I need, I, I, I need, I need the thing first in order, for, in order for me to become who I need to become. Yeah. No, that's real. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So what's next for Isaac and Moore? Man, the store, you know, definitely like the online presence, you know, making, making that a store. Um, I want to start doing um, reveals. Like, I believe my product is like, like art, you know? So I don't wanna do fashion shows no more. I think that's gonna be lame. I wanna do reveals. Like, uh, like people come all over the world just to see my next collection, how, how Steve Jobs revealed his, his iPhone, how Elon Musk revealed his trucks or his cars. That's how I wanna present my, my product like that. So that's my next thing like that. You know what I'm saying? Doing these real ultimate reveals of my products on my collection. No, that's really dope. Like an activation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. No, that's super dope. Yeah, so I'm excited for that though. Yeah. Isaac, right, so you got any shout outs you want to give before we wrap it up here? Oh, uh, I mean, I just want to give a shout out to all the creators out there. You know, all the people that's really, uh, the only way you can be creative, you got to have nothing, you know? And all the people that's having nothing or seeing nothing and making something out of that, I just want to give a huge shout out to those people. Yeah. Yeah. All right.
So I understand you got a gift for me, Isaac. You got yeah. me a camera and everything, man. So I'm excited for this. Nah, I, I, you know, so I'm taking the, the person behind the scene in front of it, you know. Uh, you know, so what, what makes this brand so unique and so different, I do these things called the box experience. Mm -hmm. And the box experience is not only you're getting a great product, you're getting a great experience. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so I take people's name, logos, and accomplishments. And, and, and to let the people know how hard that you work in life yeah. before you even get to your product and stuff like that. And that's what we're about to do right now, man, like for real, for real. No, so, I'm excited, man. Yeah, I'm excited so, to see this. So you're going to uh, take that? Yep. Well, you got this thing tied up in the knot, man. Yeah. How do we do see. that? I don't know how. Dang it. Might I, need some scissors. I know. Let me see how long. I told him not to do that. Good rapper. Okay, here we go. You gotta look all through that. So, you see that? <laughs> yeah. Off the porch. Boy, he even got the years right. That's a beautiful box. Yeah. I can't wait to see what's inside. Yeah. No problem, brother. Yes, sir, man. Throw your pouch. Rats in a quarter ounce. Two 